being free enterprise and welcome to week nine of the wait 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 hold on hold on this is supposed to be a uh this is supposed to be a break week what the heck i want some heads of the people who are uh responsible for this no wait that might be us okay anyway uh i'm night do uh and this is a uh, race between um uh team bold strategy and team Nui Moon, who uh tied in all weeks here so, uh, so this is the kind of the two three matchup that you're going to get a little bit of a uh, you get a little bit of a preview here but what's on the line here is basically who gets to pick flags for the next week here. I'm I do with me here is Yoshi Kion representing Team Nui Moon. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. I'm really excited for this one. Um, yeah, like you say, the kind of sneak peek at the matchup for next week. These two both had incredible records throughout the main tournament. Uh, 11 and 1 combined. Just the one loss in there between the two of them. So really excited to just see how well this goes for both of them and hopefully a close race absolutely and uh we have to ask which team should chat be rooting for since uh blom cricket club isn't here um usually if you can't uh usually if you can't decide most people just end up rooting for zeromus uh he's on a little bit of a losing streak here though i must say but hey, he gets a win he gets a few wins in here uh, every now and again yeah i don't think we're gonna be able to break a tie on like you should cheer for here because we're very very split on this one um I, i'll i'll say that you should cheer for i i always say new instead of new i know it's technically new but we've always i've always said new but <laughs> i'm sure we'll uh we'll split the difference on that one Anyway, here comes our starting Palum, uh, met with Edge, which is an absolutely wonderful start for our runners, at the very least. Handing over a pan, looks like I saw a Soma drop and an Hourglass in that opening uh, bit of stuff there. So, uh, the world is your oyster, especially depending on what weapon Edge might have start with here, but uh, I can see definitely looking for a couple of cheap ninja swords to get us moving here, but we are off. I think Edge typically is... It, it always sounds a bit weird to say, oh, this is who the runners want to see. Because typically, it's going to favor one of them. If one of them is happy seeing it, then the other one shouldn't be, because it means their opponent also sees it. But as far as, like, in a vacuum goes, not in a 1v1 or whatever, Edge is probably about as good as it gets in this early game in this, in this flag set, I think. The dancing dagger, we have an immediate little bit of divergence here as uh, Edge goes to the middle here. Dave goes straight to Watery Pass, picks up a Stardust J item as Cubs is heading uh, B-Line straight to uh, Hobbs. Let's see our third character here and our first boss. Um, and it's a blue robe and an Eddie here. Have we found an objective at, uh, at less than a minute and a half in? No, uh, just a water hack. Uh, false alarm here. At least a nice easy boss, though, get to pick up that character for basically nothing, and not that Edge would have had much trouble with most bosses here, but uh, this one a little easier than most. While oh, we're at it, uh, Cubs did have a little bit of a naming theme here going on, and I would like to say hello. We have quite a bit of our staff over at Ace SGDQ here, so uh, yeah, wonderful seeing any and all of you who may just be watching this from the practice room or uh, just from SGDQ period. Um, yeah, big shout out to that and uh, yeah, everything here. Uh, Dave going straight to find an Ice Claw here in Kaipa. Not much else in the weapon shop as Cubs gets through that fight easy peasy there. An Assassin Dagger is an interesting bit of tech there and oh my, uh, our... Ooh. We want to Santa Ruby because that is uh, that is the man himself, Cecil, sitting in the Kaipo bed. Interestingly, I, I'm kind of curious to know how early people value this because I've seen some people, you know, do a lot of the early looting and a lot of the early shopping, and some people just skip it almost entirely. And it it feels like a wild playstyle difference across this flag set. And we're kind of seeing each extreme of it here. Dave doing a lot of this early scouting, a lot of that information gathering and a lot of that looting. And Cubs just disregarding all of that and just straight for the bosses, straight for the characters, straight for you, uh, checks. Really get that and a little bit of an advantage loot wise in terms to Dave here, who has already found the uh, bandana black belt combo. Uh, that edge is going to be swinging pretty well, and that's kind of one thing because I am definitely uh, it's kind of nice you said that because uh, I'm definitely usually in the other camp here now. Uh, we don't have a way to back row that edge just yet, so uh, 
yeah um anyway we do get to the antlion cave and the thing is here flame does just as well with these dark imps so uh, not gonna be any problem here to uh wipe out this group of dark imps here and see what's there but we are uh we're cheering through uh, we're chewing through the uh free bosses pretty quick here that's water fat well the water hag uh and a uh, couple of other uh, hourglass bowl bosses here yeah i'm almost surprised the flame didn't just one shot the dark imps there but uh well, not much more than that anyways, and see if we get anything of interest from this one. Not yet. No, that, that that, that's will interesting. Be right at some point, but not quite yet. Uh, I mean, for our runners, that's really great news if we find a hook, because even if you're going to be uh, taking that hook route, uh, a guaranteed adamant armor for whatever you find down there is going to be absolutely wonderful for almost anything you're going to see down there. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, not like Dark Knight Cecil, but I mean, Edge helps with that so far here. So, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, you almost, with these objectives, you almost hope to see the hook show up early. Because like, normally it's that kind of, Okay, you have to plan out your team, you have to kind of set yourself up a little bit more for a hook route, but if you can get an adamant and get an objective out the way, great, perfect, just two birds with one stone kind of deal. Yep. Dave did loot the first chest there on uh, on Hobbs, which uh, Cubs I do believe did not hit there. Found another hourglass, it's kind of big here, because I'm kind of wondering, especially now that you know that Cecil's in bed, and I do believe... Uh, Cubs did get that lightsaber. I did see him picking up a few things in Antlion there. Um, but again, with a known Cecil here, I mean, it probably means the Sand Ruby's buried somewhere on the moon, because of course it is, but uh, it, it's tempting all the same. Yeah, I'm very ready after all of this setup and all of this introduction. The Sand Ruby will be on the moon, and the Hook will be on the moon. Yeah, it does kind of sound like that there. Uh, I know the game's trying to give us something there. Um, Dave wisely taking off the Assassin Dagger and that minus five wisdom there uh, for that flame spell here. Might get a little bit more lucky. Cubs finds, uh, Cubs finds Karate Geese in the Mist Shop there. Um, definitely a good thing for physical-based parties here. Um, again, most of, these, uh, most of you will start out with... Uh, I uh, want to say about, usually, you start out with 10 Rune Rings, people do like to sell about 7 to 8 of them, get about 70 to 80k in that war chest immediately. And interestingly there, yeah, Cubs picking up a short sword here just to give Edge that second weapon. Um, it, it almost doesn't matter what the second weapon is, just making sure there's something in each hand. Massive deal here, but uh, we will be hoping to find something a little better later on, but the short sword will do for now. Absolutely. Uh, the thing about edge weapons here is uh, uh, ba basically the way the game... Oh, um, <laughs> Cubs, you might want to go back for that. <laughs> That's a vanilla Demas. That's very interesting. Uh, a good find and one of the three bosses you definitely want to find here. And I kind of wonder if Dave's going to follow suit or if Cubs is going to get a little bit of a uh, information jump there. As Dave does look like uh, it's heading... Looks like the Baron here. So I may route that in a little bit after here, but... Uh, We'll see what comes out of that demist here in just a little bit. Baron, the first one that could really pose some problems on the boss slot here. Edge, kind of dealing with everything so far pretty comfortably, but there's definitely a few things on that second Baron spot that could cause some issues still. Yep, I, I do notice that they did also, looks like they started with a Soma drop here. Um, so if they do run into an early Tela or Fusaya, Fus eh, Fusoya, that's uh, wonderful news there, and uh, that's Kane with some Mega Sisters here, and oh my, that's a Baron key on Demis. That's uh, it's not an objective, but it could actually be our way underground here. Yeah, Cubs not knowing about that Cecil would hope to find Cecil in there. Obviously, I mean, there is still a chance. There is exactly one duplicate available, so it could just be the second Cecil in Baron. Um, got to imagine the odds are pretty low on that one. Uh, I mean, uh, but also yep. just means that you can do a clean sweep through Baron the first visit there, potentially just clear the whole lot in one go and save a lot of that travel time later. Yep, the uh, the Fusoya also pretty big here. Uh, pretty big heads up uh, pick up there by 
uh, Cubs finding the uh, finding the exit items in in uh, uh, Fabul. Man, I can talk today there. As NG Dave does say, I don't care. I'm gonna dart this light sword at this pale dim here. Uh, pale dim does kind of hit a little hard here. Those slows coming out uh, will kind of yeah, that's a little rough there. So yeah, Dave just wants to end it in two more hits really here, or one more with that kind of damage. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, definitely a necessary down there as well. Watching Pale Dim just punch down and a magma key pull from that as well is huge. Um, yeah, I hate to see say you called it there. Uh, Seed wanted to give us a little bit of hope there with that starting pink tail, and uh, no, no, that hook could be anywhere now. So Dave now has kind of a whole, well, at least this whole world open, um, and yeah, gonna head straight underground it looks like. I, what are your thoughts on this one? Because obviously this comes up mostly with Magma Key start, and again, this is something I know people have been very divided on. How soon do you go underground to get those shops out the way, get that free key item from the Fae March, etc.? And how much do you kind of want to clear out your overworld first? And that kind of a, that's kind of a two-part question there. Um, so the big thing is, it kind of depends for me how early you get it here. Uh, we do know Dave has cleared Hobbs, Antlion, and Baron Inn and got to there. And that edge is probably good against just about anything there, as we do see a Leviathan come out of the bull defense here. Uh, now, I guess the thing is, if you're just kind of hoping there that one of your key item checks here... Uh, does kind of run you into uh, it does kind of run you into something like the pan which you already have here which is actually probably one of the reasons here Dave probably just wants to make a uh, probably just wants to make a single dip out of the bull which uh, the pan does kind of help in that regard here um, but also some of those underground shops here uh, edge is wonderful as a starter but the one thing is, he's also a very expensive starter if you want to get the best in terms of shop, as those ninja blades are not cheap at 66,000 apiece. <laughs> also, on the other hand, if you come down here and you hit the item shops and you find, like, sirens, uh, a good way to actually deal with them, sirens' coffins here, um, vampires down here too. Uh, a little bit late for those there. But if you find a way to possibly, especially with a party like this where you have a Palum who really wants to be, uh, who really wants to get that Quake spell online as fast as possible, that's definitely the way to do it here. Yeah, for sure. Definitely, uh, I think the pan in particular is just a big value here. Um, Interesting to see the Dwarf Castle visit first with... I know, again, this is one that some runners have been scouting the boss as well, double-checking that on the way in, but... Yeah. Dave, just here for the shopping. Um, checking for those sirens, checking for those coffins. Yeah, we do have eventual access to that Warp Witch with the Palum here. He does, unfortunately, need to be level 29, which means he does need some help getting there as uh, Dave uh, puts in front of Tamra. David did put down 45,000 in on a Runax buy. That's a pretty hefty purchase there, as he does go to raid the back here. Uh, plant manager on the Job Dwarf. Uh, you kind of weirded me out, Dave. Uh, as part of your team, you have uh, routinely said you're not really interested in memeing during races, so that's uh, interesting on you there. You know what? I'm, I'm uh, like I'm that person on our team, and I regularly talk to the job dwarf. I don't know why. It's just that one. None, none of the others. Yep. Um, and anyway, there's uh, two big things in the Tamra item shop: light potions, which sometimes you really want to want with the uh, limited amount here starting, uh, but also uh, Bacchus wine there. Uh, without a uh, real career, without any sort of white mage in the party. Um, gonna be good to actually get a few of those, uh, to speed up a few fights. Uh, I don't think Kane's gonna get to drink any chests yet. I think those gonna be reserved for Edge at the moment, but, uh, definitely good to get a, uh, find on there.
And yeah, that early Baron key from the uh, Demist, or the vanilla Demist, is kind of leading to our first really big divergence here because Cubs could go underground and follow through on all of this, but Baron, while you're here, just so tempting to check that character, get a couple more bosses out of the way, and just open up. Get a couple more boss locations, I should say. And then, potentially, if that, if that gives you something like the hook, then that's a massive advantage going into those underground checks. Not only that, but a gated character as well. Um, and uh, while you said, yeah, it's going to be hard to find another Cecil here, which, because we've seen one in the duplicate, is, uh, you know, potentially not out, you know, not out there. Um, uh, big ones, uh, especially, you know, finding like a white mage, finding a Rosa would be great. Finding a Porum would be great. Finding a Fusoya would obviously be great here. Um, anything that's kind of speeds up uh, that. I mean, yeah, it kind of feels bad if you, you know, roll like an Edge or a, Te or a Yong, a Sid, or a Tella here, because that doesn't really speed you up so much. But uh, yeah, there's definitely potential rewards here as Dave is going to get the Adamant Rock out of the freebie. That's half an objective right there. All right, Coffins and Silk Webs, both very nice to find down here, but uh, still no sign of those sirens. Nope, uh, uh well, they're either on the moon or in uh, on the hook route, or they are not in this seed here. So, yeah, didn't start with any of those, so we're not gonna get a uh, we're not gonna get an immediate jump here on levels as Dave is gonna give us uh, a look here into the Fae March bosses and. Uh, Antlion taking a vacation from the moon and a punchy mom bomb in the uh, Leviathan slot. Uh, uh, nothing we're going to be dealing with here this early in the seed, obviously, but both of those are a little rude there. I guess this is a dangerous question to ask a lot of people, and I, I imagine the answer starts with you wait until you see the darkness crystal, but... At what point are you hoping for a teller to show up? Um, I mean, again, with no real source of white magic or berserk, I can definitely see it. Now, I will laugh as Dave did buy that rune axe, and of course, uh, the, uh, the free enterprise prevailing theory is if you buy something, you're going to find it in a chest very soon, so, uh, Dave, Dave not, probably not happy about finding that here, <laughs> as Cubs does dispense with, uh, Mylon and friends here in the front of Baron, so, uh, is did get a little banged up there uh okay just got a life potion cure two here uh didn't get anything on that cane but uh that's not a huge experience loss there so just a moon boss on the baron's throne not one of our objectives here yet uh Ooh, that's pretty spooky Yogo Pogo there, though. Um, that Eddie is going to be down there. I don't think he's going to contribute much. However, the Pan Bonk, that's a, uh, that's a Crystal Sword. So that's Sand Ruby, which Dave is going to have two uh, swings at here, and Cubs is going to actually have a couple swings at here, or actually going to have at least one swing at here, are going to be really kind of interesting here in the next little bit, um, because especially with that Crystal Sword Toe, if Dave finds that, uh, you can be absolutely sure Mount Ordeals is the next play. Now, also, uh, with all those party members at one hit point, you do get uh, you do get a free heal out of both ends of the uh, full defense here. So, especially early game, if you're a little roughed up uh, and you think you could take this fight, just walk in and get your free heals here. And actually, I wonder, with Dave knowing that that Paladin is there and does have a Crystal Sword, I wonder if that does drive Dave to Mount Ordeals, but, you know, also, you know, again, with Cubs' knowledge of that, uh, excuse me, of that, uh, Cecil in the Kaipo bed, or, uh, sorry, not with Cecil in the Kaipo bed, with the knowledge of the Baron Key on the Vanilla Demist here, uh, how long before Dave goes and actually checks those locations? Right, I think the Sand Ruby feels like almost the best potential to check there, because otherwise Mist Cave is just kind of awkwardly stranded in nowhere at the moment, and so going over to Kaipo is about the closest you will get to Mist for the foreseeable future. Unless you were going to go to Baron, but we know that won't happen. 
Iridia. I'm not sure Ribbon Quest that if that is our white mage there. That is a use for that Leviathan Orb, which Dave is about to get here. Uh, but more importantly, that is a quicker way to the warp spell here, as Iridia learns it very early, as opposed to Palin picking it up at 29 here. That's the other half of our forge, so yeah. the Baron's like really, really important here. The uh, the mist coming into play already, and that's a very early forge item as well. So yeah, this is there uh, Sheila handing over a Luca key and some Zeus gauntlets? There, uh, other way around actually. The Zeus gauntlets were first. The pan turn in. Uh, I mean, again, you're not going to really see one as opposed to the other, given we started with that pan there. Doesn't really give Dave any more... Uh, doesn't really give him any more direction here, so uh, again, not sure exactly which way he's going to head here. Um, that does look like an ordeals play, however. Yeah, knowing where that Cecil is, and oh my cubs, this is why you check the Baron Throne right here, because that's <laughs> absolutely free. <sighs> Incredible, so... Yeah, no, this is just gets to sweep up all of Baron in one go. Went in, did the in, followed it through to the throne, follows it through to the basement, and just the first step into Baron is pretty much the last one. Yeah, wonderful news, especially here that that Ridia here, um, it is going to get a little bit of a minor slingshot here. This is about 17,000 and change experience on this. She's going to get 34,000. She's going to be ready to go with that Leviathan Orb here uh, sooner rather than later. And uh, I would be surprised if, uh, again, Cubs has not been in the underground, but I would assume he's probably going to head there and may just go like straight to Dwarf and uh, take it out there very quickly. Yeah, saying about getting to use that Leviathan early and like, that is huge here, but I think you alluded to it earlier, the big thing is getting warp here is just going to... It really feels like a split on... I guess they both had different levels of, like, being able to be efficient because of the items they got, because of the direction they've gone in. Dave has been able to just do all of the ball in one go, where Cubs has taken a couple of trips, or will end up taking a couple of trips for that. And Cubs has ended up being able to do Baron in one go, and now it's going to have uh, some extra kind of efficiency in the underground. Um, you know, it's this, it's only a small thing being able to do those things like that in and of itself usually won't decide a race until it comes down to the, the last locations, everyone like stranding their items in the middle of nowhere, but it gives you that extra little bit of comfort going through knowing, okay, well, I managed to skip out on, like, having to go back here, or having to, like, U-turn and go back to an area I've just been to. Yep. Note, Cubs is heading to Mount Ordeals, does use the Leviathan Orb. We do see Rubicon in the back attack. A little bit of bad RNG for Dave, uh, catching that glare to, uh, to, um, Edge, who did have that Ice Claw there, just doing a little bit there. Uh, again, with the, with the absolute divergence both of these have taken um again cubs is up the knowledge of that legend sword which is big because we know adamant is the freebie so cubs is gonna have that as soon as he just picks up the fate march freebie um we are gonna get uh palum is yeah hi that looked like 19 or 18 should have access to that virus spell so not really too worried about this room unless it's exactly one or two things uh and you know namely valvulus don't want to see her here but uh, uh other than that this palum should just kind of be able to walk through here so uh yeah the question again is uh, how long is it gonna take dave to find uh to sniff out that vanilla demist And I guess the kind of saving grace here as well is you haven't really got a lot that's opened up options for you. Like, you can go on the ground and you can finish up the checks that are available there. Um, 
And if you find a foo that will... If you if you get a Fusoya while down there, then that will push you off in the direction of... Okay, go and sweep up your bosses, which could be that push towards Mist Cave. Uh, but otherwise, you know, we have so many key items missing still that you almost have to start scouting for bosses at some point. Yeah, Ordeal's not really helping. Gonna paladinize that Cecil in the bed, but just a Blizzard Spear, so uh, none of the bosses we were looking for. And the thing is, with a couple boss hunts still up, there are three in this case for Dave still. Um, you know, it, it's really hard to say fade ordeals when you're looking for, you know, exactly three bosses, and here they are. Uh, but again, this uh, ordeal's not really, uh, not not really evoking much fear to these parties here, as uh, Cubs is actually through. I mean, both of them got through really fast here, so I mean, I don't really see much time saved lost either way here. Uh, again. Dave might be looking for other options given he knows that Palum needs warp here and is headed... Uh, Dave is... Okay, Dave is going to mist here. He is going to find that D-mist here very soon. So that's uh, great news for my team. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, um, this is just kind of pushing both of our runners back close to parity here. Yeah, I think the big thing here is, because they're going to kind of cross each other's tracks a fair bit here, so Dave is presumably going to end up going through Baron after this. Uh, could go for Dwarf Castle at this stage as well, that would be the one thing that would kind of push him away from Baron, I'd imagine, but would not be at all surprised to see uh, Baron at the next play. Cubs kind of has nothing left but to go underground at this point. Um, and so the big question is going to be, firstly, how long it takes Cubs, if Cubs goes back for, like, Sheila with all the underground open, um, versus whether Dave goes back into the basement. Neither of those led to anything, so it's more that those are potential for the other to gain time back. If Dave doesn't go into the basement, that is time that Cubs has spent that Dave won't. kind of like uh, I kind of like saying it most of the time here uh, as we kind of describe it in some of the other chats here um, so right now Dave is up a uh, shop checks in the underground and turning in the pan as well as the pay march freebie uh, Cubs is up the entirety of Baron here so I would assume that Dave got that Baron key and is going to go straight down there and probably clean it out as well here and honestly that's probably going to give us a pretty good idea of where these two runners are in relation to one another here because uh, I, I figure Cubs is probably, you know, might do Dwarf, uh, but might also be looking for direction. Uh, Cubs does buy that full moon, however, and is going to at least back row that edge there. I'm not sure, or sorry, Dave is going to do that. I'm not sure if Cubs did that or not. I think he did. He did, yeah. Um, and yeah, like, I think there's always a level of saying, you know, Cubs is up on a Baron at the moment. Dave will do at least most of Baron. Um, but the basement is always that kind of question mark in there. Um, similarly, you know, if Cubs will go underground and will hit Yang with a pan. But when you're offered Dwarf Castle with Warp ready and waiting on top of that, then you probably go and do Dwarf Castle before you ever go and turn that pan back in. And at that point, presumably at this point, like, that's got to have pretty high odds of leading to something because otherwise, like, this is a pretty empty looking sea right now. Yeah, that dwarf would be super hard to ignore. However, Cubs is, and I totally get it here, uh, going to drop off that pan here. Uh, three key items, and especially when you're doing this, it's kind of like you're in a kind of a little bit of holding pattern in, pattern in your head here. And, uh, you know, if you've got a pan there, you've got three key item checks, and it's kind of like a, what do I do here? Um, I, I kind of like using it as that, kind of get my thoughts together on where I'm going next here. Um, but uh, we do know that the direction isn't exactly here, as we do get nice items in terms of a Crystal Sword and a Zeus Gauntlets, and a uh, Luka Key, which is probably, maybe not entirely, but probably dead. And 
yeah, Cub's just heading straight back out again. So also not going into the Fey March first. Uh, we'll take a little bit longer getting that Forge item. Yeah, a little unfortunate. I mean, both are going to kind of run into that here. David is going to get that Forge item. Now it is going to be a Super Smith for Palum, which, I mean, is going to be good in the sense that you're going to get uh, a weapon there that does at least have the uh, that does at least have similar damage to a Stardust Rod in terms of your Black Magic stat there. Yeah, I would assume, especially with the party right now, Dave is going to finish out the end of Baron here and then walk back in. I, I know we have discussed this quite a bit here. Uh, uh, we are definitely both usually part of team. Check that uh, check that basement there just to kind of feel like you know what you're getting there, especially if it does end up being something free. I know Dave does have coffins. We haven't found hourglasses. We found uh, of kind of the big uh, key items here. We have found... Uh, we have found... Uh, yeah, Bacchus, we have found coffins, but not sirens, hourglasses, uh, elixirs, the Leviathan orb for sale. Um, so yeah, plenty of stuff still left to find here. Although Dave having Bacchus will help a bit more against this Ogopogo as Cubs walks up and does seem to be readying here for Dwarf Castle, which is, yeah, we figured that was probably going to happen here sooner rather than later. Yeah, just being able to have that warp at the ready on the first visit is nice. Um, not the biggest thing in the world, but just one of those kind of... You're happy when it happens. It's not the worst thing ever to just dip in, get some information early. Um, hasn't gone down to the fame out yet. Uh, so, presumably... At this point, you're kind of in that boat of... Okay, we know that the bosses in the Fey March are miserable. Those those bosses are not ones that you want to see there if you're playing a seed. But Cubs doesn't know that yet. And at this point, you're hoping for, uh, I was going to say, some friendly bosses in the Fey March. Maybe something you could cheese a little bit. And talking of cheesing a little bit, we have Golbez dancing around in Dwarf Castle. I mean, he's not exactly friendly, but he is there and he is an objective. So, uh... Just more reason to come in here. Uh, hopefully you can get that Eddie hit and keep three coming there. Because the big thing with Golbez in spot one here is you really don't want to be, you know, down to, you know, one, possibly two characters here. Um, is kind of off to use the oh. Dancing Dagger here on Kane. I don't know if he's buffering up a... No, he's just trying to straight up kill Kane. Wants to have... Uh, uh, maybe, maybe just want to see if he can, uh, you know bigger chance of keeping that edge around, which I would believe probably is what uh, Cubs wants here, as Dave is walking back into Baron. We'll see that KQE. We'll get that pass here. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be there. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, Golbez is definitely an interesting find here, uh, just based on who he leaves for Cubs here. Oh no, that's uh, that edge going down is not a good. Uh... I mean, this is French vanilla. Golbez doesn't show up until Dwarf Two, at least. Oh no, Cubs lost the fifty-fifty. Um, I don't know if Riddy has enough time to get that veil up. We're gonna see here real soon. It does get the rail up. Okay, so Rydia is going to stay up, up right here. So the big thing is Golbez's spells do her here, and Rydia can finish this off by herself. However, Dwarf 2 still exists, and it sometimes is a little punchy here. We didn't start with that many veils either. Um, looks like we did purchase a few more here, but Cubs uh, correctly figuring that uh, he's going to need at least one other character here to potentially stand up to Dwarf 2 as Dave is uh, going through the cutscene here. Edge is trying to get to a Star Veil here. We do have the run buffer coming out, I think. 
Can I drop Oh no, board AI one? is alive and well here and says we don't want that edge around here. And uh, it's saying, um, yeah, that, that fail is not going to last forever on that Rydia, so she's going to cast a nice one here. And uh, we're going to hope that Rydia can deal with Warp 2. Now, uh, I mean, you can get a little bit saved by the second character that comes through. Again, Kusoya, um, an opening level Cecil, not terrible either. Um, getting a little harder to find him. Um, yeah, a new character could help here, so uh, I wouldn't be mad to sit here. The Leviathan will do a decent portion of the damage, and it's just... Uh, bad. I mean, I good definitely... Job, but not here. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely take that Boron, because you definitely want a White Mage here, but... Uh, okay, uh, a Leviathan should get this done here. Um, and it does look like it's going to fire here, unless... Uh, yeah, unless exactly... So yeah, Cubs is just going to take the kill here. Uh, with this Leviathan, hoping we do a little oh, bit more than 3k, and... Enough. Oh no, that's a low roll! Oh, that is tragic. Oh no, that's a wipe at Dwarf 2, and yeah, that's... That right there is absolutely, um... Just the... Entire badness of having Golbez there. And, uh, Cubs is going in with Piggy strats now, um... So is gonna okay leaves Riddy up just because you probably want that Leviathan there. So and Dave is uh, has pulled even here. Does not go to the forge just yet. Wants to go straight to Dwarf Castle to see who we get here. And they have pretty much there's there's a couple of little differences based on you know characters missing out on experience at the end of a battle or the fact that you know. Cubs has done a little more with the Rydia in the party and such, but for the most part, they have fought exactly the same things at this point. They have pretty much the same setups. Um, there is almost no difference between these two parties as it stands. Yep, uh, does down uh, what was an Edward slot here, as Dave kind of seems to have the same idea here. Uh, tried to get that hide off with Edward, but does not get it, so we're going to have four up again here. Uh, now the piggy strats could definitely be a thing here as, uh, again, if Ed, if, Ed, yeah. if Edge survives here, um, definitely if he can get through there, he can deal with that yawn. And this time he does, so he should have time to get that Star Veil. So this time Cubs should be there. Unfortunately, Dave also uh, getting the uh, downed Eddie does have that cane live, but I don't think either one of them lives through this virus here. Um, so again, this is possibly a 50-50. Now, Kane might be able to handle that uh, Yong as well in the back row, given how he is. I don't know how well armored he is. I think he's got a black belt and a strength ring at the least, though. Does get the 50-50 on Dave's side, though, so this Star Veil could do a lot of work. Just leaves you very worried about that Yang coming up afterwards, yeah? Yeah, I think Kane's definitely a lot better than taking Iridia to it here, and yeah, it, it does kind of beg the question here a little bit afterwards of, uh, you know, you're going to get this Porum here at base level. She's probably not going to survive the Yang fight. As uh, it does look like Dave's just uh, sitting, waiting for that damage. Takes a swing with the Rune Axe here. Um, I just don't know what damage Kane is going to take in the back row as opposed to that Rydia here. Um, which should be he should be better, but um, again, not sure. Uh, but that's a big loss of experience, actually, for all of them as well. Uh, because these spots are usually about 21k a piece, so you uh, really do want a uh, you do want your people, especially knowing that you don't have access to sirens here at the moment to uh, get all this, and it's just not really going to happen at the moment. And sure enough, like you say, that parum just instantly targeted on Dave's side. Drops are there. Yep, he's gonna go. Uh, he's gonna start by throwing a vampire here. Um, I do would like to see. Okay, the kick does forty-four. That's not too bad there. Um, okay, just just dumping the J items here as Cubs does get through it with uh, those two standing party members. So uh, we'll get to see the warp glitch momentarily here. 
Um, kind of surprised he's not sending Kane in the air here, but uh, I mean, I guess with 3,000 hit points, if you're going to dump all your J items, now is probably the time to do so. Yeah, I don't know exactly what the Kane has as far as gear goes, but the I guess he's got a remax, oh, I believe. Okay. Um, a couple pieces of strength gear. Right, yeah. And um, this, this Yang is chipping away here, so... Okay, Yang is down on both sides. King Giat hands over a... Amasa Mune, a wonderful news for Edge. Uh, not so wonderful news for our runners, who are kind of being a little uh, shoehorned here. We do have Keyless Tower left, but we're kind of Ooh. running out of checks. So, oh, Earth Crystal, there you go. Um, I, I see Dave absolutely going to check that there, and I see uh, probably better than even chance the Cubs goes and checks that Earth Crystal there. Um, again, two characters, and you have a Crystal Sword. Yeah, I think the only question mark on Cubs' side would be going towards the fey march you've still got that freebie chest as well as not knowing what the two bosses are there um one of them is an objective and i imagine the hope in putting it off is you can pick up that objective while you like the first visit you go there to get the chest but at this point you almost have to at some point just be like okay there is a free key item check I have to just take it, and if I can't take the boss, I can't take the boss. Yep. And Dave would also gonna go yeah, is probably going to give us a forge check here very soon, probably before hitting that uh Zot play. But again, um with with what the Fey March is, I definitely see Dave going to take a look at it just more because, well, it's what the Fey March is, and that is not a that's not a safe Fey March by any means. And kind of coming back to earlier, you know, talking about, oh, for the rest, early in a seed, you'd want to see a white mage show up at some point. We were kind of lacking on those. It's kind of really coming back to bite them at this point, because those two bosses are, they're difficult even for a good party, but when you can't blink effectively, that's, that's a whole new set of problems caused by Antlion and Monbomb down there. <laughs> Dave hovering over, selling that crystal sword there, uh, does pick up a set of Zeus gauntlets. Doesn't want to, uh, doesn't want to throw away the Cecil Dream just yet here. But that was a fairly impressive uh, Coco Shop Stardust rod, Zeus gauntlets, a uh, couple other pieces. I really, but those were kind of the big ones there. Uh, Dave almost pulled the trigger on selling that crystal sword here, but does look to be heading back above ground and does want to take a peek at this Tower of Zod, I guess, here. And so kind of saying now about the differences in the routing and kind of seeing how those differences come to play out later. This is the point where we really get an idea of that now, because Cubs is probably going to look at these two bosses down here and go, yeah, not yet. That's 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 a problem for future Cubs. And leave, get that forge, and head towards Tower of Zot. Yep. So that Dave. would make this the time difference, essentially. Dave basically announcing that he's going doggo hunting, equips the Masamune in an ice claw for that flame dog chest. Uh, uh, may, may only be checking the first two chests for it, but wants to deal with it immediately here, which is interesting. And there it is. Cub sees the news in the Fame Arch and says, no thank you, immediately exits out. And I don't hate it because the flame dog pays out in a Bahamut org. If you uh, or if you like to say the word blarg, well, um, Iridia is here for you. As Dave does find a uh, space dragon in the uh, flame dog chest here. And if you don't like to, then I guess it sells for a lot at this point. I mean, I think he still has the Leviathan orb in his inventory here, which is actually. Uh, a little interesting. Okay, ribbons and a white spear, you know, other things you might want. Uh, but, you know, as somebody I believe alluded to, 
Um, those ribbons were available for Dave before that Goldez fight, which, uh, you know, immunity to instant death, I hear, is a good thing before the Goldez fight. So, uh, could have saved him a little bit of time, but I don't think he was going to buy those anyway. So, we kind of shrug. Oh my, um, that's required. So that'll be a fourth objective picked up, at least. Uh, and I mean, We've at this point, you have to. The darkness crystal has to show up soon, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, we have the fifth objective ready. I mean, sure, it's behind that ant lion, but we have five objectives already in front of our face. We are basically a darkness crystal or a hook away from go mode here. Uh, because we do have a pass, so, I mean, we're down a grind. Um, so the big thing I'm thinking here is with the key item counts, uh, one, two, three, four, we've got eight on Dave's side, and actually we've got eight apiece here. If you've got, uh, if you've got the key items here, part of me is definitely thinking, um, we've got a Luka key in hand. Is it time, potentially, for a door grind? I don't expect either of them to do it, and I will be impressed if they do. I would actually believe here that uh, if it comes out, like, especially if it's a twin harp that just comes out of Zot here, um, yeah, that would give them... I mean, it, yeah, they really want 10 key items before doing that there. Doors, uh, with 10 key items, give about 62,200 XP there. Um, and with this party, it does kind of look like you, where you're probably going to lean pretty hard on a berserking edge here. I know you've got three casters sitting there, but uh, you need to do almost all the doors to get Bridia to uh, nuke, I believe, uh, through that door grind. So, yeah, it's a little interesting here. Dave, uh, yeah, that's Gauntlet's not doing him any favors here. Um,. Well, I mean, um, Scythe, uh, I'm not sure how you get fat through the doors faster than eggs, but we don't have access to sirens, so uh, I'm not sure how you're going to get the eggs. I'm picking up some of the chests. We haven't seen a lower babble play at all yet, so firstly, that's another check that they can go to to try and hit that tenth item of this. Yeah, give true. Them you could, uh, if they yeah, find you a could, half or a hook could. here. Yeah, you could steal them. I do forget that Edge is in the party, so yes, you can steal your way to uh, Sirens there. Uh, but both of them are in Zot here, again, and a little bit of lockstep now that Cubs has evened out on some of those checks here, so uh, this race is uh, practically even. Cubs also having slightly better luck with this Dawnblade looks like um, Edge making short work of everything anyways, but just having those extra casters up so that you've got some quakes going out, some summons, um, just an extra little benefit there. Boy, that's an Rosa? interesting Rosa, and I think that Dave, especially with how much Porum was faced down during that, is very likely to bend that Porum for this... Uh, for this Rosa might been Rydia actually again with how close they are to go mode and oh my that's uh that's an interesting find there Fusoya uh needing to be rescued out of the tower here but uh there he is uh, how do you handle the party here I okay so Dave says I'm gonna run some caster strats here picks them both up yeets the cane uh, Dave could be thinking 1200 here if this turns into go mode. This is, uh, yeah, Dave is announcing reflex strats here. Um, gonna pick up a Thunderclaw here and is probably just gonna focus his way here. Foo, it has enough bosses to be at full power, but, uh, yeah, this is interesting. Foo is gonna make much shorter work of these than Kane would, so... Yeah, this is going to be interesting. I kind of wonder which way Cubs is going to head here, because I kind of get the whole binning of the cane here. Yeah, both runners do know Foo and Friends there, so yeah, this could be Foo and Friends as well here. Both of them are going to need some more Star Veils, as uh, they didn't really have much in their opening kit here. 
I do know Cubs isn't a particularly big fan of Kane as, like, in general. I know not many people are, honestly, but it comes more than most. Um, but I th he's invested a little more into those mages, and I'm kind of curious to see if he'll want to drop the parham or if, like... I mean, who else would it be? Radia? Cubs has invested a lot more into the Radia. Yeah. It's definitely interesting, and we're going to see just a Crystal Gauntlet here, so uh, Zot not required here, but it does give Dave, and that Fu actually does give you a few more options before that Fey March as well here, and uh, yeah, we did say it, there is a Soma there, and moving Fu to uh, moving Fu to 200 uh, MP does mean you have uh, four nukes in the chamber before you have to refill any MP here, uh, is going to go and use that Bahamut Orb as well here, so... Um, the problem with our party is definitely not uh, opponents, uh, is definitely not firepower here. Uh, but just basically what we can find. Of note, though, Cubs did skip the Flame Dog chest. Does not have that Bahamut Orb. Dave oh, knows like and is heading. Mm -hmm. Dave, oh no, Dave knows what's going on here. Dave remembers that there are Stardust Rods over here in. Uh, and oh my, is it about to happen here? Okay, no, sell me Assassin Dagger. Um, what else are you going to get rid of here? Um, I'm, I know he might be hovering over oh. that. Uh, no, I, I guess you really only need two Stardust. Well, you need three Stardust rods for that party, honestly. But uh, yeah, triple nuke is definitely a thing. Uh, the question is, after you buy those, Dave, where do you go next? And he says Fey March. He's going for it. I mean, I guess that's a big question here is like, do you think, firstly, do you think the Fey March bosses are manageable? But more importantly, do you think it is more efficient to take them now or after trying to get to 10 items, trying to hit some kind of a grind, just sweeping through them that little bit quicker? Um, and if you're looking at that, where do you go for that one? Because the answer is probably lower Babel. Keyless Tower doesn't ever feel too enticing, but none yeah, of those do at this point. Silk webs are gonna help, but again, this is definitely going to be. Uh, and we're getting diverges again as Cubs is going to take a flyer on that lower Babel. I did not check to see who Cubs actually got rid of there. I was looking on the other side of the screen. Imagine that. Uh, he's going for trap boxes here, so uh, yeah, that's interesting there because uh, an Adam and Armor here, low chance. I believe it's only 10% out of each of these chests here, but that could swing this here. Um, but yeah, any kind of other spiciness. Now, I guess the thing here is, um, again, you're not lacking for offensive firepower, and you're not really going to be... Uh, you're not really going to be inviting a lot of those... Uh, counter counters from the ant line. The issue is just making sure everybody really gets there. Gonna put Rose in the front row. Um, it does look like he is going to be a, a battle speed 3. It does look like he's going to be sitting on Nuke and Bahamut to try and carry him past this ant line and see what we get here. Cub says, never mind, I'm stealing some sirens. Ish. Kane did take a swing there. Oh, okay. Must have. Uh, did we stop the alarm there? Or yeah, he look? Okay. Him, yeah. And this is kind of exactly the split, you know, I was just saying about, right? It's the, do you think you can take the Fae March bosses? Do you think it's better to take them now or wait until you've been able to grind? Cubs yeah. is going for the grind and Dave is just going, take them now. And if that's your hook or your twin heart, then that's it. You just, you're rushing basically to the end at that point. Yeah, I think the Bahamut is definitely helping in Dave's assessment of can I take this because I think the ant lion is a lot more doable here than the uh, than the uh, mom bomb right now and it is an objective so I guess Dave may just be thinking okay if I can just get rid of this and you know hey maybe it is a darkness crystal maybe it is a hook maybe I'm in go mode after this and I don't have to pay attention to it here as Cubs does pull a few sirens there did not see gonna get another look here and just an apple here out of the chest, which, you know, this party does want a few of here. A little low on hit points. Oh, Fu takes a big hit there on uh, Dave's side, unfortunately. 
I think this is a really interesting point as well. You kind of alluded to it in there with the if you hit that twin harp or hook on Antlion. And it's kind of interesting to see people play to the maximum potential versus the likely outcomes and kind of balancing those two against each other the whole time. And Oh my, there's our darkness crystal, that... which is not go mode yet, but that's a whole big can of worms here. And Dave reaches right for that extra spell, says, I want no part of that mom bomb. I'm going to the moon. So yeah, that is a huge amount of almost scary potential here. Um, we haven't seen a whole lot come out of this seed yet, so you almost have to imagine that the remaining key item checks are very valuable because we've seen a lot of them miss so far. And sure enough, Dave taking that detour towards Babel as I'm saying that, I think kind of coming to the same conclusion there, right? It's Those key item checks are very high value at this point, and the moon has still got a lot of chances to miss. This is this is pretty likely to pay out with something. It's just whether or not that's a useful something. Yep, and uh, just elements on top here. Um, again, Cubs did steal a few sirens. Um, yeah, if this is 10 key items here, um, the moon bosses kind of don't pay ex entirely for themselves yet, but they do get you a lot closer here, especially given what you might get there. Um, Cubs, uh, Berserk that Ice Claw, it nuked with that foo, moved straight over to the ruby phase. And was that a package, or was I looking that a little was... weird on there? Nope. Yeah, that was a package. So Dave will hit 10 items here. Uh, the tanky item threshold. Get that boost experience. But not a very useful 10th key item to hit. So... No, not especially. <laughs> Cubs haven't stolen those sirens, might invest a couple of them just to have an easier time with Antlion, but otherwise, Dave is kind of going to have the edge there, being able to take those 10 key items, go to the moon, and just kind of sweep those up as the grind instead. Yeah, looking back, I did finally take a look at Cubs' party there. Did keep the cane, did uh, let the Rydia go for in favor of that Rosa there. Uh, so the thing here is... Uh, um... So what's going to happen here is Dave is going to be up a Blarg, as we commonly call it here in that Rydia. He's going to want some more levels, however, um, for this uh, party here for Zeromus. Um, so it's kind of really, uh, you know, kind of hoping for. And uh, Edge did not do enough damage. That Ice 3 is actually going to heal here. Um, so uh does have an Ice 3 coming out. So... Uh, and actually, Cubs is going for and sees a Yong. Uh, not exactly who you want to see on that route. Uh, so Cubs does take the reset there. Goes right back to the underground. I actually like this as Cubs still does not know where Cecil is. But as you said, uh, there he is. And uh, how many sirens did he get? Looks like five. Okay, five is kind of a five's an intermediate grind, but it will get those casters up to a point where. Uh, where Antlion should not really be able to terrorize him too much there. Uh, but Dave is going to get that 10th key item, and I would be very surprised if he is not uh, going straight for the moon after leaving that mom bomb down there. And it's like, I love this because there are kind of tiny differences at the moment that have, you know, we're talking about the party comp making a difference in kind of how they invest and play in the seed at this point, which is... A lot of the time, you know, the party is, eh, what do you feel the most comfortable with? What bosses do you have left that you know you have to deal with and that kind of thing? But in this situation, Dave is going to be relying on that experience like a little more than Cubs will. Cubs will be able to get through at slightly lower levels than Dave will. But the flip side to that is you have to take out Antlion first. And Cubs' party doesn't cope well with Antlion here. Yeah. Dave is heading, uh, Dave is not going to steal Sirens. Gonna be a little dependent on that moon pedestal here, um, in terms of what you're gonna find there. I mean, could find Hourglasses, could find Sirens, uh, with Fusoya, um, Gold Dragons are absolutely on the table. Um, but, uh, you kinda want Hourglasses now. I believe, uh, Dave still does have that initial stock of two plus the one he did find. I don't think Dave has used that there. 
Uh, three gold dragons, uh, done correctly, would be about half a uh, million experience, about 540k to be extremely exact here. Would not get Rydia all the way there to nuke, and wouldn't get Palum there yet entirely either, but would get them a lot closer to where Moon Altars uh, definitely can make up some of that difference here. Um, and again, it's pointing out that I did not see it because we were toe fixated on something else, that we do know that CPU was off the board there, as uh, we did spy CPU being sent off. And uh... okay. I think it's worth noting on Dave's side as well, like, if you don't hit those sirens in a moon shop, there's, you know, a few bosses where you kind of don't want to see them. If you're going through the moon bosses as your grind, we still haven't seen a Dr. Luge. We still haven't seen um, Cal Brenner. Uh, these are things that could suck up a lot of that experience and make it so that potential of just kill the moon bosses as your grind doesn't work out the way you'd hoped. Absolutely uh, correct there, as uh, usually if I did the math on the uh, moon bosses correctly, um, assuming you get no split experience at all, you still get about six to seven hundred thousand there on a double. Um, so again, not exactly enough. Um, only elixirs and maybe this antidotes. Uh, so the uh, top of the moon does not pay out here in terms of the sirens here. So now Dave has another question on his hands and is uh, going, does not check the altar here. I'd be interested in scoping out if our duplicate Cecil might be there. Uh, Dave says, I'm just going to make these checks here and is going to go straight to k Bahamut. And this, this almost... I feel like there are kind of a few different mindsets when it comes to moon sprouting. Um, obviously, you know, you always people always talk about like, top down versus bottom up but there are so many factors in all of them and what are you trying to get like what's your aim out of this this speaks more to caring about those like the levels the experience that extra that extra impact because if you're just after the items you just go straight for the density the majority of the time I'd imagine um, obviously each runner will have slight preferences in that but that is a very <laughs> spooky bygone there, and Dave second guesses it for a moment. Uh, is going to need some pretty good RNG to get through this here. Um, and Bacchus up that edge does have the sweepers for it. Does have multiple. Uh, does have multiple pieces of quake. Does have uh, you know Bahamut there is going to nuke the main body here while the wall is not up yet. Um, as Cubs does get that Darkness Crystal and says, I'm out here, but, uh, yeah, um, that first nuke comes out, and then Bygan says, I'm getting punchy here, and, uh, oh my, 3,000 damage onto that Rosa. Did leave the Fire Claw on as well. The good news is, uh, the Sweepers are coming out here, so here comes Bahamut, um, and Quake is right behind it, and, uh, you know, again, with Palum and Fu, it should be okay for Cubs, but that Bahamut is paying a little bit more dividends here as well. Um, but again, this is uh, this is absolutely not over here, even with Edge clogging the queue, throwing up a little bit. Is going to need a little bit more. Probably needs a second Bahamut, if I had to guess here. And yeah, there's a recover. Um, just needs Rydia to not go down here. Um does have backup Quake coming on Palum as well. Edge is trying to kill an arm here. Oh, okay. Bahamut got off before the uh... there, so that should be the arms down once more. That should be pretty close to uh... getting us taken care of. I don't know if that wall actually popped down on Rydia, because I did see Fu targeting. Okay, no. Bygan is down. Well done, Dave. Uh, there's 70k, and I think, again, as you alluded to, Dave knows he's counting on all this moon XP, so getting through that as he did is extremely good for him here. Yeah, definitely a very, like, I guess, impressive fight in the sense of getting that damage out, getting the arms dealt with in time and everything, and also, more notably, keeping everyone up for the entire fight is uh, 
pretty impressive. Might be Bagen. wishing he'd sold that crystal sword earlier. Uh, Bagen throwing one last taunt our way before leaving the bait march here. Drops a crystal sword. I would actually halfway be tempted to go sell that crystal sword and buy a couple of elixirs in that shop there. Honestly, yeah, I can definitely see that. I'm, I think I typically undervalue elixirs a little too much, but in this kind of situation where your healing isn't exactly up to scratch yet, and you're taking on some potentially pretty spooky bosses coming up, like just having those extra couple to really just smooth things over, yeah, I can definitely see the value in that. Dave switching out that uh, fire claw there as we do see a uh, moon engineer here. So Sid is out. The um, so the uh, duplicate is still at large, but honestly, the only positions we still have left to actually check are uh, the giant and uh, and the hook character. So I believe all we have left, if I'm doing my character counts right, are uh, Cecil and the Duplicate. Yeah, I think that sounds right. So yeah, um, also Cubs, notably here, did uh, go in to get that Moon character. Again, has not seen the Cecil, doesn't know that... Uh, he's just waiting down in Kaipo for a Sand Ruby, so check the character here before heading out to Cave Bahama. Um, we'll be interested to see if Cubs actually hates the fight, or whether he decides to... Or he's just going to get his grind done oh, now with those sirens, because uh, that's, uh, again, didn't find the third hourglass there, but uh, again, two gold dragon fights is... Uh... You know, j just about 360,000 XP uh, life glitch there. Even more if you can get the Ice 2s uh, out there. Uh, is it going to get Palom to nuke? But it's going to get him pretty close. Yeah, and with that bluff, that Cubs is actually trying to set up for the Ice true... Uh, try and get a couple extra life glitches out on this to see if he can just get as much XP as he can from this. Um, so this is actually pretty heads up here. If you're Dave, you are like praying for the Kaipo guards. Um, really, that's about it. Most of the other uh, life glitch abusable bosses are kind of off the table anymore. Uh, unfortunately, isn't going to get the... Oh my! I Did I speak that into existence? Wish you hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, uh, Coffin queued up here and is going to get a double here on the back officer. And that's absolutely huge news for Dave there as, uh, yeah, is going to just throw Coffins and Life Glitch as much as you can out of this Kaipo Guards fight. So, free grind. Yeah, this is going to be a ton of experience here. So, all of those concerns about bosses on the moon maybe not leaving enough experience on the table with the split bosses and the ones that don't give the full amount. Oh, this was, uh, no, absolutely what Dave wanted to see because the, uh, the, I think this is like the one fight that is the exact opposite at this point, right? This is the only life glitchable fight left, I uh, say. I think it, yeah, that's, I think it's about the only life glitchable fight left and Dave got doubles on most of those there with those coffins he has there this is i am interested to see just how much this uh this uh pops up here in terms of xp because this is going to be about half a million if not more here yeah five hundred and twenty-seven thousand. that's uh that's halfway to new caridia right there yeah dimps were gone baron guards were gone kaipo guards were there uh yeah, Baron Guards were on ordeals, so we knew those were in. Rosa's got white already. And there's go mode. Wow. Wow, that's absolutely nuts there. Dave picks up the go mode here. Does have white. I don't know how close. I saw some Palma's 49, Rydia's 46. 
this is interesting here, because Dave sees go mode here and is thinking, like, I want nuke on these kids. But here's Twin Harp. I'm in go mode. And Cubs is on the other side of this, and Cubs sees that Bygan and says, no thank you, I'm out. Which is absolutely the correct play, by the by. Um, so... Yeah, the question is now, is Cubs go bottom up, or does Cubs go uh, top down here? Because Cubs did take both of those uh, fights there. Now, the thing is, with those sirens still, is Cubs does not have... Oh, okay, Dave is going to steal sirens. Dave wants nuclear on those, and it just needs to find an eyeball here. So, so I was about to comment on, the big difference here would be that Dave still likely wanted that experience somewhere. And apparently that is coming from Sirens. Um, like, I, I figured it would be the moon bosses, but coming back for the Sirens here, finding a Siren. Hey, hey, free siren. <laughs> <laughs> um, this makes a lot of sense as well. Like, you can just guarantee that experience here and then finish with the Twin Harp, come out perfectly at Troia to go and turn in the pass and go to Zero Mist. Cubs using a party that doesn't need that experience has already done a bit of a grind. The question was then, Cubs writing the moon by comparison, and it looks like we're seeing a top down, so... Yeah, that's... unless this turns out to be exactly the hook, which is actually what you don't want to see as Cubs, is definitely the Twin Harp is much faster than the hook route here. Um, again, with the levels that these have and the skill of both of these players, you know, it's not going to be a real hard thing here, but just uh, in terms of time taken. Uh, but yeah, it's going to balk us up. That Mylon Z is not going to be a threat, especially at Edge. Uh, carrying, a, I believe, a full moon in his fight is going to do effective damage. This Mylon Z is not long for the world. I'm actually curious here, saying about if this is the hook, then, you know, you get your other objective, but is it? Is it actually better for Cubs in this spot to just get nothing? Your next play almost has to be the Ribbon Room after this. would say so, yes. Um, again, just because, again, your next play is going to be, it's probably about time neutral at that point, just because it's going to take the while to, you know, go down there. Now, mind you, uh, Cubs, you know, is out of, I don't know what he has in terms of, uh, in terms of XP there, uh, does look like uh, that Palm is definitely close to Nuke, that uh, Rosa is pretty far there too as well. Edge, please. Um, can't even kill an egg at the uh, levels he's at with the Zeus Gauntlets and everything. And speaking of Zeus Gauntlets, there's another one for... Uh, there's another one for Cubs there. Um, but yeah, Dave uh, picked up about four Sirens, which is probably about all you need. I believe the radio was at 46 there. Um, so with the extra, yeah, I believe four sirens should be enough. Uh, it does move battle speed back to one. I'm never guilty of that or anything. Yes, I am. Uh, I just can't buy a kill on these eggs. <laughs> But that food virus wouldn't have done it either, so... Uh, so Cubs did take a rest on the whale here, is heading back in, and as you said, is almost guaranteed to head straight down to the, uh... So to the uh, bottom the, here. The interesting part will be, firstly, there's the potential for Cubs to go for the White Spear Altar, the Crystal Sword Altar first. I generally don't think that's that likely when you're on a key item hunt. You're, you're fighting moon bosses regardless. Take the one that gives you two items. Um, and just kind of push that potential objective that little bit closer. Especially considering Cubs has already done the grind. Um, and so I guess that then becomes the other question here is the difference here for Cubs to go down to the ribbon room take down the guards, and then get back out and get to Magnus versus the time for Dave to has already finished a grind just to get to Magnus here. The only then remaining time difference would be how smooth are those Zeromus fight? 
and I kind of I I obviously given the circumstances I don't like to say it I think the Zero's fight looks better for Dave at the moment as well just having those consistent casters guaranteeing that you can just sneak in through that counter health refill and just get it on the first way through is I think a pretty big edge at this point Fun. Yeah, Fun. going full cap there. Um, yeah, it just, uh, I mean, the party is very similar aside from that uh, Rydia over the cane here. Um, but yeah, and actually, uh, yeah, Rydia does have nuke actually for, uh, yeah, uh, Dave did take the four sirens, did do the math there. Um, uh, his children and casters are all uh, nuclear uh, ready here. So yeah, it's going to be a quick through Magnus there. Um, Cubs did have more of a grind here, so does life glitch the back one here? And it did look like Fu was, yeah, Fu's going for stone here and makes the offslot stone here. So does get through just a smidge faster on that. Is going to get that twin harp. Uh, only three, only 381,000 there. Uh, yeah, Palom got to nuke here. Uh, Rosa got white. Yeah, uh, Cubs is absolutely ready for the sea fight as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's a little bit of a foot race here as uh, Dave is trying to stone the entire party here uh, to get through that Dark Elf script as Cubs is exiting the moon a, as quickly as possible here. Um, Stonecaster's not uh, not exactly playing uh, fair here with Dave, so uh, Cubs is going to get a little bit of time back, assuming he can uh, assuming he can get through uh, getting through this script a little bit faster. But yeah, Cubs is off the moon. Uh, sees the go mode here. Uh, it's close. Um, again, as you said, I kind of agree. I do like that extra nuke caster, but uh, we we'll see how it plays out. Um, again, these runners are 11 and 1 combined. Um, it, there, there's, uh, there's exactly a reason why we see this match here is because they are just so evenly matched. But hey, I get to shut up for a little bit as we do get to see GJ Spoonie B here uh, with some music. not buy a break with some of those rolls there. Does get another Bahamut Orb as Cecil did say, hey, I'm in the seed somewhere. Um, but yeah, that's Bahamut Orb. That's Magnus Crystal coming out as we are going to get our second bit of, uh, as we are going to get our second bit of music here uh, momentarily. Uh, so yeah, that's telling you exactly how close this is. So Dave is on his way to Z.
away with that. My cat was attempting to sing along the entire time here, but again, with uh, how fast this is going right here, uh, Dave is headed up to the moon, so we're just going to get this out of the way here. Um, who, who's but in this break week? Uh, Z is just looking at this like, wait a minute, I was having coffee and anything else this week here. I wasn't even supposed to be here. But whose butt are we going to kick tonight? And, uh, you know, is it cute? Can it do your taxes? And about 80 billion other questions we ask of this here. I don't have much sitting away, sitting around in the way of uh, bats here or anything for this edge to contribute, if I remember rightly. Uh, no, not even a spoon here, and I mean, to be fair, with four casters here, it's really going to be, you know, you, you are going to want to nerf here, and Rydia is probably the one to throw the Star Veil, as she is probably the one most at risk here, even though she does have quite a good amount of magic defense rolls on her but again you just don't really want her taking the counter i mean at this point in time um we do want to you know, it's, it's just get as much damage out there as possible here as uh the, the queen herself has deigned to greet us here um so yeah the nukes are starting to fly um i'm guessing edge might just be throwing an item or one of these nukes are, is going direct here just so we do get an initial nerf off here uh, yeah, just kind of hoping for not so low rolls here. Okay, yeah, uh, Dave does have a silk web and is tossing it now for that opening nuke. Uh, but yeah, uh, out pouring the damage. Cubs is pulling the fight. Um, yeah, here we go. Perfect target there, there for Dave as well, just getting the, uh, the counting. For, for all the uh, questionable RNG on some of those rolls he got there earlier. Maybe, maybe something like that, but yeah. Um, yeah, as Chad is pointing out, um, if uh, if Cubs does not wipe to that goal, Bez, and as you kind of said earlier, um, yeah, with runners of this caliber, the little minute differences, um, that one just kind of was the thing here, as, again, we're, we have to look at Z fights, um, yeah, Dave does probably need just a few more spells to end this here, but yeah, there's just, uh, I mean, I don't really see, uh, Cubs really having much issue here either, as it's probably gonna, yeah, we're gonna see hybrid stats, yeah, strats coming out here, that edge is ready to drink a Bacchus over there on the other side. Yeah, that uh, little castle really coming into play more than we, uh, I think even more than we realized at the time, because both of them, you know, got through the Golbez fight, but were struggling to keep more than one character alive. Cubs spent a little while trying to get Edge back, and then couldn't, and just had, uh, I think it was just the Rydia stood standing. Whereas Dave being able to take that cane in, um, yeah, Kane much more equipped to handle that fight on his own. And... Yep, and there it is. There's the crack boom there. And uh, yeah, Dave at a 121.55. And yeah, it's just pretty much as you're saying here, the veil's coming out for Cubs. And this is not, you know, uh, this was absolutely close. And with that ping, uh, Dave, as uh, just, just to throw away my uh, um, neutrality for one minute, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I got I got to see Billy's pick five sets next week. That's what we're playing for. Yeah, it, it very much was, and uh, yeah, I mean there were some wild divergences, and then you came together, and then you diverged again, and then you came together again, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it just came through, and yeah, pretty much yeah, the two big things here were uh, you finding the Bahamut in the Blar, uh, you finding the uh, Bahamut in. Uh, in the tower, which Cubs skipped over, which yeah, that was the, that was the 
Yeah, that was yeah. a doggo. I had to leave. Yeah, Rydia, I was honestly... Rydia was on the chopping block right until I found that, and I said... Then the food's like, oh, I got a Edge, I have Nuke, and I have Bahamut. That's enough to just blow up anything I need. Yep, and uh, the other part was, unfortunately, Cubs did take a uh, wipe to that Golbez, only got through with Iridia, and Yong was just uh, a little too yeah, we, there. Yeah, we were discussing this afterwards. But yeah, the for uh, runners that were basically, you know, again, 11 and 1 coming into that, uh, both of you, you know, you put on a show and pretty much demonstrated why you were both 11 and 1 combined coming into this match, so... Yeah, I assume we're going to be seeing the uh, end to uh, to Cubs of this fight here very shortly. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, other than that, we saw you hover over the uh, we, we saw you hover over selling that crystal sword a few times there, and I'm like, uh, is he going to do it? I mean, uh, the thing is, I knew where the guy was. And I didn't want to talk it too early because I knew it's a Sandra we away from having him. Yeah, I had peaked my I booked my heading pipe early just to see who was there. I was like, oh. Okay, and then get the then the crystal source is hand you Chris the self hand you crystal like oh okay give me the sand ruby yeah and uh, sand ruby yeah. was buried yeah something we never found there and uh, yeah both of you especially it's like running off to Zot there with the crystal sword in hand it was just like um yeah and I mean I guess you after that Zot you were probably a little less keen on actually finding him but uh, well yeah the party just kind of took a shape right after Zot like okay seed I give up. We're just, we're just going to do mages the rest of the way. Well, I mean, he was the only character we didn't find, because as I'm sure you're aware of, Hook was a character and, uh, you know, Giant was a character, and we had a dupe still at large there. So, uh, but yeah, um, yeah, we uh, we gave you an extra week. Um, now you went to 7-0. and You're the only 7-0 and runner going into the tournament here. Uh, so, yeah, that's... Uh... And, well, I'm, I'm hoping I can do it. I'm hoping we can, I can do this again because I got Cubs again immediately next week. Yeah, we, we did kind of note that this is kind of a uh, uh, kind of a, um, a preview as to what's going on here. And uh, yeah, with a race this close, uh, I mean, you know, even if I didn't have a vested interest in it, which I do, it's definitely going to be something I want to watch. I'm hoping we've got a good show for everyone. Uh, you definitely did it that, and there is the final white there for Cubs there, uh, finishing. Uh, yeah, the Z fight was a little, uh, longer there without that third nuke there, but yeah, no trouble whatsoever as down goes Zelimus again here. Uh, just, uh, looks like about four and a half minutes on the dot separating you two. Uh, four, four and, uh, four minutes, 40 seconds, sorry, I can time. 3.30, I believe is what you're looking for. Yeah, close enough. Yep. Cubs is a great runner, uh. And the races we've had, uh, we races we've had here back in ZZ5 have all been tight. So, I'm looking forward to doing this again. And apparently, chat is giving us the uh, the mom bomb, yeah. the rat tail, the tower, to sand. We are not fighting the guy. <laughs> also, Dathis, did you really have to tease us like that? Super early pink tail. Hook is on the hook's like crystal sword. You are absolutely right. I had to tease you guys. This is the last. This is the only race you guys are gonna see this week. You are one hundred percent going to get baited like that, and I wanted to see somebody take it. None of you did it. I'm so disappointed. But Chad is so very welcome for the fact that Cecil was there. But you don't get to do with the guy. <laughs> crystal sword free from that starting pan. The guy just didn't reach and Kaipo fed. And Sam will be buried behind that. Well done. Yes. Um, Yoshi, anything you want to add here? I, I, I think you said everything I was going to, other than uh, congrats on a great race and to, to take off the, you know, the impartiality for a little bit. Um, I'm hoping it goes the other way next week. As, I, as you should, I wouldn't expect anything else. 
think all we can expect here now is that's going to be a very good set of races. But, I mean, that's going to be all that. And uh, even with the non-playoff teams, there are going to be the title rounds in there for uh, for a little bit of rating for the uh, for the uh, other teams there. So uh, none of our teams are actually, you know, done racing unless they choose to be at this point. So, yeah, definitely a lot more free enterprise in the next three weeks uh, coming in here. So, yeah, uh, definitely a lot more to um, definitely stay tuned for there. All right. Thank all you for on the show, and uh, I believe I, I don't know if Cubs joining us or not. Uh, I believe we're taking care of that in just a little bit. Do we have Cubs in just a little bit of beef? Yeah, I can talk. Yeah, once we get you kicked out of here, Dave, okay. we're going to get Cubs in here. So. In that case, I will let Cubs come in here, so uh, you can have a chat with him. So, have a good night, Devin. You too. GG, <laughs> Yeah, we're waiting for just a moment there. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, um, you had to really want that Cecil, and I believe both of them really did want that Cecil, but, uh, wow, that is, uh, one heck of a chain you would have, a rabbit hole you would have had to fell, fall down to get to there, so, uh, yeah. good on both of them for avoiding that one. <laughs> In a way, with the parties they ended up with, the Cecil doesn't even feel that terrible. The hook certainly does, like, could have got that as your objective, and, nah, uh, it's just buried away as well. And I think we are joined by Cubs as well. Yes, uh, GG. Um, uh, we hope you enjoyed the uh, teases that see through at you and uh, paid off in absolutely none of them. Uh, what? What's a Cecil? Cecil doesn't exist. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Yeah, you didn't uh, see the Cecil lying in the bed. So when uh, looking around a few extra places, but. Uh, it didn't matter because that sand ruby was buried in the absolute tail end of the most awful chain anyway so yeah that mo there was no way that uh mom bomb was being fought to seed that that was absolutely not happening new no. you know it, it it's as soon as i took the white to karate i knew it was probably over um Dave's too good a runner to give that much time and make that back. Just and not I, much that I can guess, be done there. For what it's worth, like, that is pretty much the the only difference here, right? Is the fact that it was to the karate specifically and not just to the Golbez before, and you're probably looking at three to four minutes on that, so... Um... Yeah, yeah, seed, really. hard, seed hard funneled you into Fame Arch, and then just handed you go mode as soon as you got on the moon. There really wasn't a way to make time up, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fair. Short of short um, of gambling on not doing ordeals or or a uh, tower or something, nah. There was really only one path through this. I mean, with that said, you did both find some ways to split away from each other pretty effectively. Uh, obviously more so in the early game, but even down to things like um, you took the Mura altar where Dave went and fought the Bagan in Cave Bahamut. Um, the, the difference in party is the most notable one, I think, the Rydia. Um, I'm kind of curious, like, what was going through your head when you saw those Zark characters, because I'm not gonna lie, I was sat here going, like, there's no way Cubs keeps a cane here. I... I didn't really have a good plan for Z at that point. I didn't have a plan at all. Maybe Fu opens up Fu and friends there. Maybe 1,200. We saw vampires and veils earlier, so maybe 1,200 even. Um, there really wasn't a great plan at that point. Uh, and uh, I had the crystal sword, so I figured until... I figured until Cecil shows up, I'll keep Kane. And the big thing was I hadn't seen Val. And didn't want to risk going to the moon. 
uh, and run into Val with really zerking edge, and that's really all I could uh, all I could get through with. Yeah, no, that adds up. Makes sense for sure. No, it was a good race. Uh, looking forward to the real thing next week. Um, both of us may or may not be uh, at John Con in New Jersey, so I don't know if a live race could happen, but we'll we'll, we'll see how this shakes out. Uh, look, looking forward to to next week and just uh, seeing how this goes. Yeah, that's definitely the uh, the good news about this is that nobody is actually eliminated this week here in our uh, one extra race here. And we will get to see uh, each other's teams here uh, in the following week here. And yeah, I totally forgot that JotCon would be happening there. Uh, I wish I was there, but uh, circumstances and all that. So I hope you guys have a wonderful time there. Uh, but yeah, um, we get to do it again next week. Uh, if 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 I'm being honest, the, I'm mo I'm more shocked at the hotel internet holding up for the stream rather than anything else. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'm hoping we actually did put on a we did put on a very good show here for uh, GDQ. So I hope uh, uh, again everybody did everybody watching that and uh, not the mainstream there did at least have some fun watching this here. Yeah, it was a good race. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching it back. Uh, thank you both for comms. Uh, Arnlor, thank you for tracking. Dathis will have words later, but that, uh, that was decent. I'll I'll go for that. Uh, no, this is it, it's good that this isn't it, and uh, we'll see what happens next week. But uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much. All. I'm gonna duck out, and uh, we'll see y'all in a few days. Yeah, no, enjoy yeah. the rest of your week. Enjoy TVQ and run it back soon. Well, that was uh, it on that there, and uh, again, I kind of figured I might have a little bit more time talking about this here, but uh, yeah, that's kind of absolutely nuts that we're already done here, and um, yeah, again, a big shout out to Dathis there, and uh, Arnor for the uh, restreaming and chat, uh, yeah, tracking as well. Uh, Yoshi, it was a pleasure commentating with you here. Um, anything else you want to say here before I do believe we are actually sending people out to uh, the people watching there at the main GDQ uh, stream there? No, I have nothing really to add here. This has been a ton of fun. Um, thank you for commentating with me. This has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, we're going to send you out that way. And a shout out again to all our free enterprise staff that are actually at GDQ right now. So, yeah, have fun if you're out there. And again, we will see you again next week here.